Welcome to Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce. Today, we're having a fun day at the GoGo Group with Kara Angus. Kara, define your business in just a few sentences. I would define GoGo as an opportunity to provide fun and educational and entertainment experiences to kids in various settings. So parties, events, gymnastics, and childcare. Well, let's start with childcare. Tell me about that. The child care is our biggest, about 98% of our business. We have uh, 27 locations in which we service children all across New Brunswick, and uh, we look after just under 900 kids a day. Wow, that's amazing. It's a lot of littles. Yeah. <laughs> so some of those would be all day care, some would be after school. Tell me about how that split works. Sure. So our preschool program would run full days and um, our after school program would run full days anytime the schools are closed and then part time when the schools are open and they would join us after school. Our split is about 75-25, so we have about 75% of our business is after school age and 25% is preschool. Okay, so that's the childcare piece. Next up, gymnastics. Tell me about that. That was how GoGo All started in 2006 and it's gymnastics equipment put in a truck so we can travel anywhere. Um, currently, we do a lot of rural outreach, so we'll do uh, camps in Graminan and Chipman and places where they wouldn't have access to the state-of-the-art gymnastics equipment and gymnastics instruction. And then on the weekends here in Fredericton, we offer classes, recreational classes to children ages 18 months to 8 years old. And next up, parties and events? You got it. Essentially, we provide a lot of children's entertainment to a lot of corporate functions um, and cities government uh, special days throughout the year, etc. So you can see us on Canada Day and on New Brunswick Day and at lots of grand openings and company events with bouncy castles, face painting, glitter tattoos, water slides, and a whole other slew of fun things. What made you decide to branch out into other aspects like childcare? We did gymnastics for three years consecutively. I think in 2009, third year in, we were giving about 4,700 kids in our province gymnastics annually. We had three trucks servicing Fredericton, St. John, Moncton. It looked great from afar, but from inside, uh, my family and I were working crazy hours and it just couldn't turn a profit. And I was at that moment of what do you do? Do you just close your business and start paying down your loans? Um, I wanted to teach at UMB and I looked at uh, into those experiences and I actually had a principal who's now working with me, so it's so cool, but it was Chris Tradwell at Park Street that tried to convince me to go into the childcare market and explaining that there was lots of opportunity and lots of growth to service children. It took uh, a bit of convincing, but we did a provincial tour and from those 33 daycares that I toured, I really felt that we could serve the need and the market in a different way. And from then on, and I've been quite passionate about childcare. So the pivot to childcare came in 2010. Started so slow. First year we had 32 kids. Almost lost my shirt again there too. <laughs> Next year it was like 50 kids and then it was 70 kids. Our ramp up was very long. Um, but then somewhere between year five and year eight, it went into the hundreds and then it just continues to grow. Tell me about your background. How did you even get into this business? How I got into this was a business plan competition at UMB and I was confident that I could do a project well under gymnastics. I was currently coaching at our competition club and I had a lot of opportunity for growth. So it was an easy project for me to put together to essentially say, I want to start this business. It just kind of all spiraled from there. We won a competition, a New Brunswick Innovation Foundation competition, 20,000 bucks. <laughs> Uh, on my 22nd birthday, I'll never forget that night. And But in order to get the prize, you had to start the business. And so here was this pivoting moment of, do you start the business and hope for 20 grand at the end of the year? Or do you kind of focus your dream on teaching? And we decided to start the business and well, I guess the rest is history. What's the ownership? What's the management? How many employees do you have? How does it all work? We have a lot of frontline team. And then we have a middle management team that focuses hopefully on a couple of locations. And then we have a corporate team at the head office. And so that's where most of my days would be spent, would be managing the corporate side of the business. Um, but essentially there's managers that manage each division and that they oversee a team of supervisors that oversee a team of our educators that are working with the kids and doing the hardest job and the most important job of the whole organization. And then my day-to-day -day is a lot of 
human resource, accounting, marketing, networking, it's, um, it's quite far from the kiddos on most days. And how many people work for GoGo? Right now we have 142 on payroll. Wow. It's a big team and an important team and they are the only reason why we can do what we do on a daily basis. Tell me um, about your different locations. Did you say you have 27 locations? We have 27 uh, facilities or operational components and so some of those would be under one roof. There's uh, regulations in daycare that you could only go to a certain amount of children by license. So we, there's a couple of buildings that we have two or three licenses in. I think it nails down in the end to 17 physical locations that we operate out of. Um, and they run like mini franchises. That's been one way that I was able to keep control or quality control is that you should have a similar experience at most of these locations. Most businesses are out there seeking um, clients and looking for people to come and do business with them. Is that the case with you? Knock on all wood. <laughs> it has not been the case for about a decade. And I actually um, am very, very conscientious about that. It can affect you when you don't, when you have wait lists, as long as we have wait lists, hundreds and hundreds of kids are on our wait list to get into our programs. Because we haven't had to do any marketing or sales. I think last year in our budget, it was less than $3,000. And what that would be is like t-shirts on a donation. Um, I always want to make sure that we remember what it's like when we needed clients and to make sure that our brand and our standard of client care continues at that mm -hmm. age because when you're hungry you do business in a different way and I try to really encourage our team that it wasn't long ago that we really were hungry and we needed the people who believed in us but we've been incredibly fortunate in the last few years to have a, a great loyal following of our wonderful wonderful clients and their word of mouth mm -hmm. brings in more. So tell me about your, your brand. Everything goes under the GoGo umbrella. Um, how did you develop that brand and, and how do you market it? I actually called this company original Zero Gravity. And in university, that was the formal company name. And I remember I was in my dad's office sitting on the carpet on the floor and he was in a chair and we were trying to come up with a new name. We needed t-shirts in three days. And he was encouraging me to call it GoGo. And it was that we were on the go and we were moving and now this gymnastics truck was moving and I hated it. Mm -hmm. The first day of summer camp started, I was in New Maryland, uh, eight kids were a part of the camp and I was coaching it. And my dad was talking to a client and we were saying, he was saying, well, we're looking to think we call it GoGo. And at that moment, they had a little two-year-old, too young to join us. And they turned around and said, go, go. And all of my marketing training from UMB <laughs> clicked in in that moment. And I was like, that's a great name. Because if an 18 month to two year old child could say it that quickly, I knew that this would be successful. And my goal to keep it under the GoGo umbrella is that they know the ownership is consistent and hopefully our brand standards stay consistent. But I also wanted to name our businesses so simple that you never had to guess what we do. Well, I'm no brand expert, but I think it sounds like fun. Go, go. It's, it's fun. It has life. It's enthusiastic. So tell me about your presence on social media, because that is a good way to spread your message and get your logo out there. We keep a presence. So we have three pages on Facebook for each of the divisions, and we try to keep those active in terms of what our children are doing. So they're not sale based, but they're more information based for clients and their care. And then we have an internal social media group where that is a great way for me to, um, look at and see what our programs are doing from a quality control perspective and also from a customer communication perspective. So every day our team will post photos of what's happening in their center, they'll tell us what's happening and it allows our corporate office to keep a pulse on what's happening on the ground. If, you, if a parent calls in, I know what they've done because I've seen their posts. So we use social media more effectively from an internal perspective. Tell me about then word of mouth and um, traditional advertising. Are you using those or how is this message getting out that's causing you to have a waiting list? Our brand is being driven by word of mouth from our clientele. And what's unique about that is that I firmly believe if you look after the clients in your care, they will look after you. So my re-registration rate is in the 90s. So when you look at that from a year to year, I only have three to four vacant spaces per daycare, and I have almost up to 18 months to fill it based on when children graduate out. So they, that has served us well in, in that component. I really believe that we need to look after our families, and we do a lot to do that. My goal is to, to bring joy to my families and our kiddos and our care, and I know that if we do that successfully, they will spread that.
competition. Who's your competition? We are just so busy looking forward that it's just very hard to look sideways or backwards. So I've always said, I use this quote a lot in our, in our staff meetings, is that if we're not riding the wave of change, we're going to be underneath it and that yesterday isn't good enough. You know, mm -hmm. we need to continue to push the envelope. And I believe if we can continually push that brand, raise that bar, increase the quality with better programming, educators, services, add-ons, uh, care, and all the above, we won't have to worry about competition. So when you talk about riding the wave of change, what do you see as your growth trajectory? What do you see as the opportunities that will come next? That's a tough one for me because we have a lot of areas that have asked us to go open childcare centers. Mm -hmm. And for the last couple of years, we've not been able to open them, not based on the need of the market, but just based on the size of the team and really coming down to some soul searching questions of how large of a business do I want? Because as you know, with growth comes a lot of commitment and a lot of time. I've got three little kids now and uh, their mama works a lot. And so that is what is holding my team and myself and my family back from further expansion is just realizing that cost from like a personal investment. I do think maybe when the kids get older, we can grow further in childcare sectors, but um, there's lots of opportunity. I would love to branch out into Oromocto. We've had a strong, strong call from that market. Um, we've got a great footprint in St. John now and we could establish permanent centers there quite easily. So there are some really interesting and exciting opportunities for us. So when you talk about time and team and your own, you know, growing family, what would you say are the biggest challenges that you faced as a business owner? Hiring folks who have my standard and my brand in mind. and knowing that it doesn't change just on top of hire. So my standard and my brand grows as we grow. And it's important that I'm constantly training and bringing up to standard our team as our brand and expectation grows, they're coming along with me. We do not have margin for error with people's yeah. kids. There's yeah. nothing more important in the world. And um, I am non apologetic for mm -hmm. that. So what it's would you important. say, Kara, is the biggest success story that you've had? I think the biggest success story is that I was 22 and created this in Fredericton, New Brunswick out of UMB. Um, this is a multi-million dollar business. But just to know that you can do it in your hometown and that we have such a supportive and mentoring community and culture. You've talked about mentorship. Tell me about your opportunities to have gained mentors over the years. Oh, I'd love to. There is not a day that goes by that a decision doesn't go through a mentor. I think that is something that people wouldn't expect. It's very rare that I would make a decision on my own. And you know, I, my first group of mentors came from Junior Achievement. So those business advisors that would have helped me when I was in company program in high school, uh, they stayed with me. They're still with me. My lawyer, the lawyer that was a mentor when I was 14 in my program is my corporate lawyer today. And then each and every business, whether it would be an award that we won, a group that's so engaging in the community like the Chamber, all of those managers and CEOs and presidents really just took me under their wing and continued to guide me. So we've talked about all the great success that you've experienced and some of the challenges along the ways, but have you had anything that you would consider a failure? Yes, I've launched lots of products that hadn't turned a, product, a profit. So the effort was too hard than what the reward or the outcome was. And so we would launch them and then scale back. Gymnastics was a beautiful success story from a marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. People still introduce me as the CEO of gymnastics and it's like 1% of the business. So it's quite comical. Uh, but, but that really was a very challenging business and something I would never promote. There was all sorts of catastrophes in that business. So from a profitability long-term stance, in my opinion, a complete failure, but um, a branding, an incredible success. So that's why I still keep it open. And we run it um, totally as a nonprofit, as a gift back to Fredericton. It loses money every year. But I believe that the excitement of our coaches and the opportunity to get children engaged in gymnastics facilities in a recreational way is so important. What would you say you enjoy the most about being an entrepreneur? I enjoy the most of having the flexibility on my day. So it doesn't mean I work any less. 
probably work more. <laughs> but I do like the fact that I can show up for the important events in my kids' lives. I can plan around when I want to do it and not having to answer to anyone is, is quite lovely. I guess circling around that question, is being an entrepreneur what you expected it would be? It's absolutely not uh, because I do things behind the scenes now. So as an entrepreneur, I started out wanting to change the way kids went to sport and then when childcare was offered. And unfortunately, I don't get an opportunity to teach sport or to uh, participate in our childcare sectors on the ground up unless I'm coming in for a special visit. So that is the difference is that as your business grows, your job as an entrepreneur changes to look after all the behind the scenes, the accounting, the budgets, the payroll, the human resource, the lawyers, the legal, all of those things that you may not have ever been an expert in and may not ever become an expert in, but yet it's falling on your plate. Tell me what you think of the opportunities for economic growth and, and prosperity right here in New Brunswick. I believe anyone can be successful. I've always said that. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very good advice. The other one I would say is that you can't be married to your idea. The business and the products and the services I run today are nothing like I wanted to run. For example, we have a hot lunch program that everybody in the office can't stand. It is so much work. We're negotiating with food clients, we're delivering to a thousand kids who all want a different palette and a different menu on their plate <laughs> and trying to make everyone happy. We make no money, we lose a ton and it's a huge administrative burden. Nobody in this company wants to offer hot lunch, but our clients love it, so we offer it. So you know, being willing to adapt your services to meet the needs of the clients and what's happening in your current market, despite how you feel about it or how much you love or don't love uh, with it, I think that's what matters. Welcome back to Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce, and today I'm talking to Kara Angus, CEO of the GoGo -Go Group. So one of the things that I know must be challenging in this business is that you have a lot of regulations, more so than perhaps other fields. Tell me about working with that. So the benefits of a strong regulatory system is it helps you ensure quality and other people are on your side to increase the quality. I'm not confident that those making the regulations and how quickly they are with the details they are have a true understanding of what it, how it impacts us in a day-to-day -day operation. And from that, um, how quickly we need to pivot to adapt to new and changing regulations is also very challenging. So something else that I think has been a challenge for many businesses is COVID. So tell me how COVID impacted your business. It affected registration numbers. You then had an, a major and immediate issue with cash flow. And so managing your cash flow, keeping the rents paid, keeping the lights open, and your staff hired without being able to predict how often and frequent the numbers of kids would come back was very challenging. I knew because of the training in our industry, how hard it is to attract applicants and the required paperwork that they need, just essentially in documentation to start, I knew we couldn't let them go because of the fact that as soon as the market would be ready to come back and we didn't know when COVID was going to end, we needed to be ready. So managing that was kind of the biggest challenge in the beginning. So originally we were the first business to come back. It was healthcare and childcare. We had about a three week vacation. I actually remember secretly being excited about this. It was this first time that we could close doors and I hadn't had a break in 16 years. And I'm thinking this is, this is gonna be okay. The emotional side of COVID has not gone away. And we were the ones responsible to explain the new regulations to parents on what would have been a daily weekly basis. And so many of our clients had a very hard time accepting what those regulations would be, understanding them, why did they change, why are they inconsistent, and yet all we were is a message person delivering it from the departments that we were getting the messaging information from, but we received a lot of flack back for that. So that emotional piece still affects us today. The plus to us with COVID is kids didn't care. And they are so adaptable, they never would complain. They wore their masks like champs, they carried on their day, and we all could have taken a lesson from a child in that time. Kara, tell me about organizations that have helped you along the journey or that continue to help you. So huge props to Junior Achievement. Uh, then it went into the University of New Brunswick. They were huge players to us. I had Steve Burns at Bulletproof guide me for the first six, seven years, meeting me daily, showing me the ropes, 
big, big deal. Then it was our professional relationships. So it was our law firms, our legal firms, our accounting firms that would guide me. Um, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, I say that. You guys just helped us to write a letter a couple months ago. The other one I want to give huge prop to is a CDBC. They funded me when I had nothing. And I went back to them for five rounds of funding without turning a profit. And I stood up in front of these successful folks and I said, please just believe me. Um, without them, we wouldn't have been alive because no one would look at us from a financial institute. So we've talked a lot about mentorship and advice and those sorts of things. What would you say is the best advice that you've received as an entrepreneur? As an entrepreneur and as a person, it, it came from my, my parents, my home, um, and it's to always take the high road. And that is the hardest road you could take. You know, when someone's really upset with you and they go low, you got to go high. Uh, I think that's a Michelle Obama thing she would always say but essentially that's a really tough piece of advice but you will never regret doing it the second piece of advice that's more tactical with work is get rid of the stuff that you hate the most and for me that was accounting and it was so critical because we couldn't afford an accountant uh, but as soon as I allowed myself to hire an accountant and let that piece go I was a much happier entrepreneur and maybe if I had a third one I would say to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you and that's interesting because the people you need have to be at the same level of the business in which you're at. Kara, I know that the business and you have had some recognition, some awards. Um, tell me about that. We've received business awards from the Chamber uh, through Women in Business, through CDBC, uh, Ernest & Young, we RBC Women's Award. We've had some pretty phenomenal experiences. One of the latest ones is we were flown to Toronto for this huge gala. And, you know, a live orchestra through the RBC Women Entrepreneur Awards. It was amazing. But when you reflect on those awards, it's not necessarily the award you won. What it is, is an opportunity to sit back and thank those who've helped you along mm -hmm. the way. At those award ceremonies, I always have a, a table of my family. They are the ones that are getting the brunt of this all day long. My parents work in this business on a daily basis still. My husband, he had to give up his entire career and came and joined us about seven years ago just because we couldn't juggle both at night. You know, everyone that surrounds an entrepreneur has to be bought into their vision or at least help support them. And, you know, how can you, how can you thank someone for that? So these ceremonies allow you to do that. And then we always celebrate with our team and I bring them and I say, look what you're doing. It matters and it's meaningful and we're being recognized for that. That would lead into the question, what next? What are your plans? What is going to happen in the next 12 months or the next three years or even five years down the road? So we're opening a K-12 private school in Fredericton, um, starting out with the early years and hopefully in September 223. But I haven't told anyone, so here it is. Uh, we've been working on this for about a year and a half behind the scenes, um, hiring the directors. Um, and yeah, and, and one of my strongest mentors, and I mentioned earlier, Chris Treadwell, is is on this ride with me. So we're going to hopefully create, you know, the best school in Atlantic Canada. Have I missed anything important that you'd like to share with us today, Kara? You know, I, I always want to take the opportunity to thank our families. It's, it's our educators that deliver our programs day to day that are by far the most important people in this business. They are the ones that make this dream happen and make it possible for kids. And it's our parents that go out of their way to choose GoGo -Go and continue to choose GoGo -Go and to bring them every day and to allow us the privilege of looking after those little ones. We're always looking for great companies with a unique story to feature on the show. If you have suggestions, please get in touch with us.